evening, everyone. My name is Janet Forrest. I work at the Nantucket Athenaeum as one of the adult program coordinators, and I'm here along with my colleague, Daniel Griffin. Um, and tonight, thanks for coming Yummy Monday. Tonight, we have Sarah Todd. She wears a number of hats, but tonight she's going to be talking about herbal tea and um, herbal alliances for stressful times. I think we all could use a little bit of that. So welcome, welcome, Sarah. Hi. Um, so I recently launched a small herbal tea business called Moon Mojo. Um, so I'll just tell you a little bit of background about me and how I came to herbalism. Um, so growing up, I spent a lot of my childhood really um, fascinated by health and wellness. Um, I really had a passion for plants and um, understanding their health benefits. Um, so I was vegetarian for many years and then vegan later on. And through this really came to also discover herbalism and understanding specifically the actions of individual plants and how they can impact um, your health and wellness. Um, so throughout this, I eventually, I became a chef and I learned um, to cook professionally and I still do that um, as one of the hats that I wear currently. Um, and Moon Mojo really came into being about three years ago, I knew I wanted to start selling herbal products. Um, it was actually my first winter on Nantucket and my first time like being able to enjoy um, the peace and quiet on the island um, in the off season. And I began to um, formulate different remedies for myself, um, different tea blends. And I, a lot of them I still drink to this day and they became um, the foundation for my initial line for Moon Mojo. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna pull up a slideshow here. All right, all right, this is my first Zoom slideshow, so please <laughs> forgive me if I um, make any mistakes, um, just give me a heads up and I'll, um, see what I can do. Um, so I just talked a little bit about my personal history and why herbalism is important um, to me personally. I find that um, the reason why herbalism in particular is important is because when you drink teas and you use these remedies on a day-to-day -day basis, they can have really profound effects over an extended period of time. Um, and it kind of, um, it helps you create a foundation of health for your life and ultimately like the the little the small daily habits that you um, create for yourself are the things that have the most impact in the long term um, so all the herbs that i'm going to talk about today are tonic herbs so these are the types of things that you know you may take them and you may not feel anything like immediately you might um, but the biggest impact is going to be something that is more profound over time Okay. Um, another thing to think about when talking about plants and plant medicine is that everybody's body is different and just because one person says an herb is good for one thing, you have to take into consideration that your body is different in all the stages of your life. Um, on a daily basis, your body changes and we're constantly evolving and um, we're never exactly the same, even as individuals and then compare yourself to another person, like there's an even greater difference. Um, so the most important thing with um, learning about plants is understanding that the experience that you have is incredibly personal. And while there are some overarching themes, some ways in which we are able to relate to one another, um, there are also like very specific um, responses that you can have to plants. Um, this being said, I'm not a medical professional, um, so I have to give a disclaimer that if you feel that you need to see a doctor, consult one, um, don't just buy um, some herbal tea off of the shelf at Stop and Shop and hope that it um, makes you better. Um, may it be something that supports you in your healing process, but it's not you know, the first line of defense in, um, in cases of chronic and acute issues. 
Um, so there are different ways that you can prepare herbal teas. Um, the most common way is hot infusion tea method. Um, you can also do um, a cold infusion, um, which is particularly important for certain types of herbs that have, um, it's called a demulcent property, which means they actually become kind of like slimy. Um, and this actually helps to create moisture within the body. Um, so for example, I have some marshmallow root here. And I don't know if you can see that the water is like slightly more viscous than just regular water. And this is because um, marshmallow root is a demulcent herb and demulcent properties are typically only activated with a cold infusion. Um, and it doesn't mean that it's bad for you if you use hot water and marshmallow, but to get this particular effect, you have to use um, cold water. Um, and something else um, is called a decoction. And um, this is something that you use typically for tougher parts of plants, um, roots, barks, things that are fibrous um, and a decoction is basically you take a pot of water and you place the herbs in it and you boil it. You can either keep it covered to keep the water from reducing and to keep all the constituents into the pot um, or you can remove the lid and um, evaporate it to concentrate the liquid and then once you have that liquid it can be consumed on its own or you can mix it with honey and um, a little bit of alcohol and that's what becomes an elixir. Um, another method is a tincture, and this is you take a high proof alcohol um, and your herb, and you place it in a jar, make sure the herb is totally covered, and then over a period of 30 to 60 days, shake the jar um, to get all the surface area of the herb exposed to the alcohol. And um, because alcohol is a universal solvent, it has the highest ability to draw out the constituents from the plant that you want um, and also has a longer shelf life. Once you make a tincture, they pretty much never go bad, um, especially if they were made properly um, and they can be convenient because you can keep them in little tiny bottles and just take a few drops um, whenever needed. Um, powders are great for convenience purposes. You can throw them into um, smoothies, um, lattes, etc. Um, and then a handful of other things. Um, for somebody who doesn't consume alcohol, for example, you can use the same method that you would for a tincture with glycerin, and this is called a glycerite. Um, you can also do oil infusions, which you normally gently heat the oil. Um, and once the herbs have um, released all the constituents into the oil, you strain it. And this is how <clears throat> you make a lot of the basis for personal care products, um, topical remedies. Um, and I personally really like to make vinegars out of fresh plants, um, which I'll come back to a little bit later. Um, so when talking about plants and people, um, you have to take into consideration um, every plant has certain sets of energetic properties, certain actions that typically take place um, within the plant once it, it is consumed in the human body and then take into consideration that person who's taking that plant, um, what is their age, what is their lifestyle, what is the current climate, what is their current level of stress, um, and all of these factors can be um, quantified into certain um, energetics. Um, and this can, like, most of us have probably heard about Ayurveda, traditional Chinese medicine. Um, there are like ancient systems that also look into this and through herbalism, we kind of draw from all these different traditions and um, we look at those same uh, factors. Um, just for a quick example, you know, take, you have a person who um, their hair is like really dried out. They have a lot of redness in their skin. Um, maybe they have a really stressed out lifestyle. Their job is really difficult, um, experiencing inflammation in the body, a lot of muscular tension, maybe some pain. 
uh, plant that we're all familiar with is coffee, which is actually considered a medicinal plant. You wouldn't say to that person like, hey, I think you really use some coffee. I think this would uh, be the thing that, you know, makes you go faster so you can barrel through your life. Um, you wouldn't want to give something like that to a person when that in that state. Um, so you just want to look at the whole person and you want to look at all of the energetics of the plant. And when you combine them, looking at the, the big picture and how they interact with each other. And sometimes if you know, if you take a whole bunch of herbs that are all like drowsy inducing, it will make you very drowsy. Um, and so it has um, the ability to, when you make an herbal remedy, it doesn't have to be so black and white. You can balance things out within um, a formula and this can be incredibly useful. Um, and then the other factor to take into consideration is um, the taste of the herb, which isn't necessarily like tasting like you put in your mouth and taste it. That's part of it too. Some of it has to do with the aroma. Some of it has to do with the mouth feel. Um, so herbs like ashwagandha, you, you would eat it and you wouldn't think of it as a sweet herb, but it's sweet because it's a tonic herb. It's like nourishing. It has that energetic effect on you. Um, something like marshmallow has viscosity to it. Um, a salty or a mineral rich herb, you know the presence of minerals when you, when you eat it or drink it and it kind of makes you thirsty. Um, things like seeds have um, oil and fat already present in them. Um, and then mushrooms have a natural umami. Um, pungent herbs like garlic and ginger, aromatic when you're walking through the garden and you brush up against something and it releases those essential oils, that is the aromatic quality of the plant. Um, things like hibiscus are sour, um, acrid herbs, something like valerian, when you smell it, it's like, that is really not that appealing. Um, and then astringent, when you, you know, you oversteep like Lipton iced tea and it has that like tannic quality that makes you kind of thirsty. It's like your mouth dries out and it creates this kind of like muscular tension um, and things like uh, Szechuan peppercorns have like a tingly quality to them. Um, kava kava is another one of those. Um, so these are things to take into consideration when you're trying to make something that's appetizing, um, understanding what these herbs are gonna feel like in the mouth, how they smell, how they taste. Um, these are also things to consider. Um, and then another aspect of herbalism that I find um, really important is that in opposition to Western medicine, which absolutely is important and has done a tremendous amount of good for um, our world, it, herbalism is not one pill, one ill. It doesn't look at like high blood pressure and say like, here is one thing that you can have that will lower your blood pressure. It, rather, it looks at a lot of different elements um, and you know ultimately you can choose herbs that do have that same effect but we're more interested in looking at the body as a system and the plant as a system and understanding how those two um, systems interact is is really important so the first herb i'm going to talk about is ashwagandha which is, um, it's become very cool lately. It's an adaptogen, which means that it helps the body um, build resilience to stress. Um, it's very important for um, circadian rhythms. So if you're finding that you're off cycle, like sleep wise, your meal times are all over the place, maybe you have to work at night, shift work, um, maybe you're jet lagged. Um, ashwagandha is a really good plant to help remind the body what time of day it is. Um, it also has the ability to improve cognition, memory. Um, it balances the blood sugar and it's known um, traditionally in Ayurveda as um, something that increases overall vitality, including libido, athletic performance, um, endurance. Um, and it's a tonic herb as well, which means it's something that you can take every day and um, it can have positive long-term effects over time. 
Um, it's anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, which means that um, it improves the body's response to like, basically when the DNA replicates itself um, at times um, the over time, the ends of the DNA strands are called telomeres, and um, sometimes they become frayed, and they no longer want to sync up to um, give your body the code that it needs to reproduce a cell. And an antioxidant helps the body combat this breakdown over time. Um, and um, in this process, there are often uh, free radicals released, and an antioxidant helps the body repair those, those ends of the DNA. Um, it's also a nervine, um, which is the type of herb category that helps to calm the nervous system, that it encourages the body to go into a parasympathetic state, which um, means that rather than being in fight or flight, you go into a rest or digest state. Um, which is really useful um, if you're not being chased by a tiger. <laughs> um, so good uses for ashwagandha um, decoction is probably the best one. Admittedly, I almost never decoct my herbs. I typically just take them in tea form, but if we're being proper, the best utilization for the herb since it's a root is a decoction. Um, you can use the powder, tincture. I really like ashwagandha in things like coffee, lattes, um, chai. I really like it with sweeter things like honey, um, different dried fruits, cinnamon, like that type of flavor profile works really well with it because it is just a little bit bitter. Um, and yeah, does anyone have any questions so far? As I... Could you remind us what a decoction is? Yeah, so a decoction is um, you take your herb, typically it's a root stem or bark, like one of the more fibrous parts. You put it in the water and you just boil it at least 10 minutes. You can really boil it as long as needed um, to reduce it, to concentrate it, or just keep it covered to keep everything inside the pot. Um, that is a decoction. And if people have questions and you're a little shy, you're welcome to put them in the chat. I have a question. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, how are you? Happy Monday. So I'm into herbs because my grandmother, it's especially in Jamaica, it's part of our culture, which we don't call herbs. We do. We call it bush tea. So we grew up using a lot of like herbs like valerian, St. John's wort, a lot of them stuff that's not here. And I've, I've, gotten, I've gotten fascinated with all the wild herbs here. You mentioned about tinctures and I know that you have started this wonderful business um, with Moon Mojo and your teas are amazing, which I love. Thank you. How will you incorporate that with using Nantuck, it's um, wild herbs into your new line? Um, I may not use much wild beyond the beach roses just because I'm a one person <laughs> operation and it's a lot of work to um, gather and forage for things. Um, beach roses are definitely something that I intend to use in my products. I actually have a really nice um, blend that um, is like grounding and centering, has a lot of roots in it, um, burdock, uh, dandelion root, tulsi, and um, oat tops. Um, and that's going to be my home for beach roses. And then as far as tinctures go, um, I will make them for sure at some point. It's kind of like my phase two of my business. I'll start with just the, the herbal teas, um, but I'm hoping that by the time, say June, July, I, I hope to have some tinctures available. And I my, my first priority is gonna be making bitters and other things that can actually be used for cocktails and things more for beverage and fun purposes. Um, even though it is like potent medicine, I like the idea of um, being able to consume a medicinal plant when you're also having tequila. <laughs> um, and 
yeah and then the other locally sourced things that i plan to use um sally obremsky the grateful gardener she's going to be growing um, some herbs for me on her sustainable plot this summer um, so i'm hoping that by late june i will have some actual nantucket grown things um yeah i don't know does that answer your question no, thank you. Um, you know, there's one thing, um, there's someone else who uses like the elderflower to make elderflower syrup. Yeah. And so many people are like, what do you use it for? She makes it, but I explain it to them and they're like, wow, this is great. I'm like, it's so high in vitamin C. It's free. It's on the island. So I'm glad that you're, um, you know, make um, educating people on the use of all these holistic medicines because so many people undermine it. Yeah. And like you said, Western medicine is great, but for me, I've seen where we have grown up using it, most of Jamaica, and we did pretty good, but thank you. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. Um, so the next herb I'm going to talk about is astragalus, and it's actually, have you ever been in um, like a traditional Chinese medicine shop, if you see these things that look like tongue depressors and jars, um, that's the astragalus plant. Um, which actually is a legume. Um, the seed looks like a lentil, um, but what we use for medicinal purposes is the root. Um, and I envision astragalus as this kind of protective shield for the body. Um, it's something that is really incredible for immune support and fighting off viruses, infections. Um, it is also a tonic herb. It's something that you can take every day and it will have no negative impact on you. Um, it, it, it also has the same like antioxidant, anti-aging properties as ashwagandha. And it's something that you can pair with ashwagandha to double up on, on some of those um, properties. Um, because it is a root. Um, use it as a decoction item. Um, I also really like to use it in savory, like culinary applications, um, things like making a vegetable stock with like dried mushrooms. Um, you can put astragalus in there and it honestly has very little flavor. Um, and so you, you don't know that it's there and it's there doing its immune protective things for you. Um, th any, anything that takes a long time to cook, like a stew or a braise, you could make a sachet with astragalus, you could put thyme, bay leaves, garlic, like whatever your normal um, like braising or stewing herbs would be, throw astragalus in there and it's a little extra bang for your buck. Um, it also is great as a powder tincture. Um, I also like to infuse it in um, ghee. And one of my go-to things that I have nearly every day, first thing in the morning, I make a bulletproof coffee or a matcha. And what that is, um, either have coffee or matcha tea, and then you add a tablespoon of MCT oil, which is um, medium chain triglyceride oil made from coconuts. Um, and then ghee is the other component. And so if you have a ghee that's been infused with a lot of different medicinal roots, um, things that are delicious like cinnamon, ginger, you add that in there and it makes like a very, very fast, um, highly potent medicinal latte that um, fuels your brain first thing in the morning with fat, which is its most efficient fuel source. Um, your brain is made of fat primarily. Um, so it's very good for getting the wheels turning <laughs> early in the day. Um, and yeah, so it, it is like honestly used in a lot of Asian cooking traditionally. So I like to pair it with ginger, burdock, any type of dried mushroom. And then for immune properties, um, elder is another good choice. Um, which you can find here while in the island. Um, next herb is Tulsi. Um, it is an incredible plant that is, um, what is special about it is the, the volatile oils present in Tulsi um, are, there's about 20 of them. So it's like having 20 different herbs, but it's all one plant. And so you still, rather than having to consume time for your time all and like yeah all the different constituents you um can just 
consume Tulsi and you have all of those benefits. Um, so it's another adaptogen, it's a tonic plant, something that is beneficial over time, every day, good for the immune system, antioxidant. Um, it is another mood boosting plant. Um, it's particularly good for um, breaking bad habits and getting out of, um, like if you wanna make new habits, whether that's like the way you talk to yourself, you know, you want to drink less, drink Tulsi instead. It's really good for um, reinforcing good health supportive um, habits. Um, and one thing that I've been forgetting to mention as I'm doing this, um, my screen is covering up the bottom where I find that a lot of plants in herbalism have like a paradoxical quality to them. Um, so let's see. So for me personally, I find that um, Tulsi is like energizing when you need energy and it's grounding when you need to calm down. Um, and because of that, I, I have it as a primary ingredient in a couple of my blends. It's the first ingredient in both my uplift and my good mood blend. Um, yeah, let's see. Um, Tulsi, if you have access to it fresh, it is delicious as a vinegar, even you could combine it with like regular basil, um, you can make a really nice iced tea or hot tea, you can add it just straight up to honey and um, strain it out of the honey. And the thing is, because there is some water that will come out of the plant, you might want to refrigerate that honey or add a little bit of alcohol to it to keep it from fermenting. Um, and as I mentioned before, um, this is another good candidate for adding to an infused ghee or an infused oil for culinary purposes. And the plants that I like to pair it with, um, lemon balm, which is another one we'll talk about, astragalus again, um, gynostemma is another um, longevity tonic, um, rose is really good for mood boosting, and even um, regular tea, like green tea, black tea, I like to combine it with Tulsi um, because the flavor is amazing. And then you can also have a little bit of caffeine as well. Um, the next herb we'll talk about is lemon balm, um, which is actually a very wonderful plant um, to grow. It attracts bees. Um, it's something that is like, very mood uplifting, just the aroma, those volatile oils, when you smell it, it's hard to have a bad day. Um, it's one of those plants that you just wanna like touch and, and to, to release those um, essential oils. Um, so it is really good for mood. Um, if you struggle with ADD, ADHD, um, anxiety, agitation, um, insomnia, um, it's really good to balance the mood and bring you back to a centered state as far as from a, a nervous system perspective. Um, it does have a relaxant quality. So if you have like muscular tension, it's great for that purpose. It's great before bed and just a little bit sedative. I don't find it to be um, personally like a super sleepy herb, but I do find that it is relaxing. Um, it is good for viruses, um, relieving pain from viruses in particular. Um, it's an excellent choice in the summer. Um, anytime there is excess literal heat in the body, say if there's a fever or if it's more like an inflammatory heat, um, it helps to, it ultimately cools the body, but it does it from this like quality that it's called diffusion where it begins by warming internally. And then um, the diaphoretic quality brings that warmth to the surface, which encourages the skin, the external parts of the body to cool off. Um, and it's a really fantastic herb for everyone. Um, it's not contraindicated in any way. Um, it's totally fine for children, for older people, pregnant women. It's, it's a good one for everybody. Um, this is another one that I like to use 
and some culinary purposes. If you have access to it fresh, it's amazing to make a lemon balm vinegar. Um, even the nice soft tender leaves, adding it to a salad, um, roasted vegetables, it's amazing with fish. I feel like a lot of times we go towards dill or tarragon um, with fish and lemon balm is also really delicious, um, even with raw fish with crudo. And this is one that um, if you have space in the garden, it, it really can be robust and it just smells amazing. Um, and I like to pair it with other like common garden plants like lavender, rose, sage, mints, um, and St. John's wort more for the mood uplifting qualities. But um, I find that it has like a lot of, um, it evokes a lot of memories for me of being in my grandmother's garden and that in combination with the other plants that were present um, really can transport you to, to somewhere else. Um, the last adaptogen we're gonna talk about are nettles, um, which will be coming up soon. Um, I am sure they grow somewhere wild on this island, although I have not found them personally. Maybe I'll have time to find them this year. Um, nettles are an incredible plant um, for um, the kidneys, for the adrenal glands. Um, they are high in vitamins and minerals, really good source of iron. Um, the leaves are actually about 25% protein, which is very high for a plant. Um, and this is a plant that is a diuretic. So if there is um, edema, swelling going on, it helps to release excess fluids from the body. But at the same time, rather than just getting the fluids out, it also has the mineral capacity to replace whatever it, it flushed away. Um, and the paradox with nettles is that nettles actually have little hairs on the stems that sting. Um, and if you, purposefully touch them, say if you have arthritis, um, you will, like, I forget what the, it has a specific name, um, but basically when, when they sting you, um, it causes your body to have basically an allergic reaction. And when the body brings its attention to this part of the body, it um, gets rid of the pain that's present. Um, so it's also actually very good for um, seasonal allergies as well. Um, I really like nettles as a replacement for um, spinach. Um, so if you're making pasta from scratch, um, making a nettle puree, you just take the flesh, fresh plant and um, blanch it very quickly, get rid of the large stems. Um, once it's blanched, it will, um, it will no longer sting your, your, your hands um, so you can handle it at that point once it's cooked. Um, I prefer it over spinach because um, it does not have oxalic acid in it, um, which you know if you ever eat raw spinach, um, it gives you that kind of like chalky mouthfeel and that's the, that's the oxalic acid present in the plant, um, which is actually the plant's defense mechanism against you eating it. Um, so it can cause inflammation for some people um, and nettles are, in my opinion, more delicious um, because they don't have that aspect. Um, it is also an incredible thing to infuse in vinegar. Um, if you make a vinegar with fresh nettles, then you have this mineral rich vinegar that you can put on salads all through the, the other parts of the year when you don't have access to this beautiful plant. Um, it is also something really great to freeze as a puree um, to add it to soups um, anytime you need a little extra boost. And then as a dried leaf, um, it's excellent as a hot and cold infusion. It doesn't have a very strong flavor, um, so it's not off-putting in any way. Um, it gives you a lot of benefit, um, although it is, because it is a diuretic, it's kind of drying. So you might want to pair it with something like marshmallow root, which is hydrating. Um, horsetail is another plant that is high in minerals. Um, 
raspberry leaf is another good one. Um, nettles and raspberry sort of um, have action that restores the entire pelvic region, um, including the kidneys, the adrenal glands. Um, Moringa is a similar plant in that it's very high in vitamins and minerals. And then like spinach, I love to pair it with um, cheeses, like making a spanakopita with nettles would be incredible. Um, any type of culinary herbs, cilantro, parsley, and alliums, garlic, um, scallions, onions, all great with nettles. Um, so I'm going to take you on a walk to my kitchen and I'm going to show you how I make, um, let me stop screen sharing how I make um, an herbal hot chocolate, which is something I've been doing almost every night lately. Um, does anyone have any questions at this moment while I have, while I'm in transition? Actually, I have a question. Um, you talked about vinegars. What do you use as a base for your vinegar? I might've missed that. Um, my, my favorite vinegar to use for vinegar infusions is champagne vinegar. Um, apple cider vinegar is also great. It's a little bit cheaper normally, uh, more accessible to find it organic. Um, but the flavor wise, my, my favorite is um, champagne vinegar. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Let me go over here. And... My kettle. Um, something I failed to talk about earlier is um, equipment for teas. Um, so the way I like to brew tea personally, I find that having one of these um, in mug baskets is nice because um, it has a lot of surface area. Um, when you add your herbs, they really take on a lot of water and take up more space. So if you have them in like one of those little tea balls inside the, the cup, they kind of, the herbs all like kind of scrunch up together and they don't get um, full exposure to the water. Um, so I really like the tea baskets. And then I also like um, these tea filters from Stop and Shop are large in size, um, which is, important for getting all the valuable nutrients out of the plant. Um, yeah. and using a French press is also really nice. Um, if you're serving tea for two people, you don't have to have a teapot. It is nice to have one, but French presses are also great. Um, I like doing cold infusions just in a mason jar overnight and then straining it out. Um, Think what else about tea brewing methods? Oh, um, making sure that it's covered. Having some type of cover on your mug is important so that um, those essential oils go back into the cup instead of evaporating. If you leave it open and you smell it, it's very nice, but um, you want those oils to go back into the, the tea cup so you get all the benefits. All right, so I'm gonna make you um, an herbal hot chocolate. Um, so my water is boiling. So these are my roots and berries. Um, I have ginger root, ashwagandha, valerian, elderberry, cassia, and faux tea root. Um, and I'm just going to put these all in my French press. I'm also going to add some uh, rose and some chamomile. adding hot water. I'm going to try to let it steep for at least five minutes. Um, the longer, the better. Let's see here, somebody has a question. A bottle of commercial hibiscus tea every day. Um, I would say so if it doesn't have sugar in it. Um, Hibiscus is something really easy to make at home also, and that way you know the quality of the hibiscus that you're getting. Um, if it's important to you, you can make sure that it's organic. Um, but I would say 
as long as it's not like a, a sugary tea and it's no preservatives, it should be totally fine. Um, and then I'm just gonna cover my tea. And while it's waiting, um, yeah. So I have um, some cacao, just raw cacao powder. Um, I like to put um, collagen peptides in my tea at night um, actually has a little bit of glycine in it, which is um, another, it's not a plant relaxant, but it's an animal <laughs> relaxant. Um, and then some, this is a, like a ketogenic um, coconut powder. So it's like MCT oil that's been powdered. Um, I'm just gonna put that in my mug. And this is um, a kava kava tincture that I made over the winter. It's very intense. Um, I, I made it with rum, so it, it's been nice to add a little bit to um, eggnog and um, hot chocolate. It, um, kava kava does have kind of a weird mouth feel, so you don't want to take a whole lot of it. And it's also, I find it to be very potent. Um, relaxing. Um, my boyfriend has like the opposite uh, response to it. He finds it actually very stimulating. Um, so you have to be careful um, to discover how an herb uh, behaves for you personally. Um, I'm just going to have just a few drops in my mug. And then I normally sweeten with either honey or maple syrup. It's just a nice local honey. You can add that as well. And you can add um, nut milk to it or regular dairy. Um, it's not entirely necessary if you have something like um, the coconut cream powder has a nice creaminess to it already. Um, does anybody else have any questions while I'm steeping? I have a question um, again. <laughs> How long, like if someone were to start taking, uh, drinking tea or doing a tincture and you said you can do it as long as you want and there's good longevity, um, like how long does it normally take where you might sense a, re like, uh, a response to it? Um, I would say that I typically have like, an immediate response to it, but to have like a long-term medicinal response to it, you want to do it, I'd say like at least two weeks, maybe three weeks. Um, and then on top of that, the other thing that I didn't mention is that a medicinal quantity of tea is actually a quart, which um, may seem like a lot, um, but if you make batches of it, you can keep it in like a thermo flask or, um, the herbalism training program that I'm doing, the woman who runs it, she has like one of those air pots and it's her and her husband and they share an air pot full of an herbal tea blend every day. So it's just hot. It's there for you. Um, you can find those on Amazon. Um, and then as far as tinctures go, um, an actual like dose of a tincture is one full dropper full. So the whole thing is actually considered a dose. Um, I typically take less of them because I find I'm, I'm very sensitive to them because of the alcohol. Um, but in like proper herbalism, it's a quart of tea or um, like a full dropper full of um, tincture is considered medicinal. And you mentioned adding alcohol and does it kind of matter, depend, like you mentioned rum, but I imagine you could also use vodka. Does it matter what alcohol you use? Um, it can, it really is a personal preference. Um, traditionally it's vodka or brandy. Um, if you have access to overproof rum, that's another good choice. And you can use lower proof alcohols for tinctures. Um, they may not have the shelf stability as something with a higher proof like um, vodka brandy overproof rum would, um, but it still is alcohol. It still has the same solvent properties and it can be fun to do like even a, um, 
like infusing a wine with herbs, um, which you wouldn't like wine obviously has a much shorter shelf life, but it can still be delicious and medicinal to um, use a different alcohol, um, depending on what your taste preference is and what your vision is. If it's something that you just want to have on your shelf for a long time, or if it's something that you want to use even for like a party or for fun. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. And where do you find like the droppers and stuff? Where do you get like the stuff? I mean, like you can buy mason jars at Marine Home Center, but like the droppers and, and smaller bottles that you'd use for a tincture, what, where can you get those? Um, I kind of reuse them from various other things. Um, like if you buy, you know, CBD in a little bottle, I tend to recycle them, but you can find them online. Um, I'm, for, I'm drawing a blank on the names of the websites right now, but it's it's very easy to just Google. You can look up glass. You want to find something usually that's um, a colored glass like amber or cobalt um, so that it, if it is something that you're going to be keeping for a long time, it doesn't have exposure to light, mm -hmm. um, which can oxidize and um, reduce the potency of the tincture over time. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, anyone? Comments, thoughts? When we first started doing Yummy Monday, we were doing um, twice a month, I think we were doing just a spice, like a spice challenge cooking with something. And one of our first ones was hibiscus. Oh, nice. And uh, it's delicious. It's really, really good. That's awesome. Yeah, my hibiscus blend is Bloom, which is, um, it's designed for women. It, it, really can be consumed by anyone, but it's designed um, mostly to support women's bodies. Um, it's really good. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna show you how I, um, I use like a, you can use a blender, but I have a little hand whisk for mixing. So these, these are great. And normally, I'm always afraid I'm gonna make a mess. <laughs> yeah, you gotta find the right angle. <laughs> and I normally underfill it and then I top it off at the end with either a little bit more tea or some um, milk. Awesome. Oh, cheers. <laughs> That's great. Um, does any, thank you so much, Sarah. This was so informative. I think sometimes people give a lot of information, so it's not that people don't have questions, but it's just a lot of information. Oh, so. right. yes. okay. <laughs> it's great. It's all good. And um, if anyone uh, wants to watch this again, we are recording it. It'll go on our YouTube page, so you can find it there and watch all the great information again. Um, does anyone have any final comments or thoughts? No, no only that I will... Uh... I'll let Danica know uh, about this, and if she wants to get in contact with uh, Sarah, it seems that they they went to the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, she work, you know, she's working for a store, which I guess just sells herbal products. I guess I don't know. Yeah. I don't know to what extent it uh, you know gives advice to people. I, I have no idea, but, uh, but it seems to me that you're in the same. Uh, same field, so it might be you know a good idea to contact. Yeah, I'd love to. I, uh, I believe I've met her in passing a couple of times, but I haven't okay. um, had any in depth. Um, yeah, well, I'll, I'll let her know about uh, your show, and it's available on YouTube. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Good. Thank yeah. you. That was yeah, fun. I can put you in touch with Danica. Um, she actually does a program every other week. Um, she does tea and tarot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stop by. Okay. Great. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, um, do you have any anything to say as you wrap up? Do you want to plug your website? Yeah. Um, 
my website is moon-mojo.com. Um, there's online ordering there. I'm also selling through 100 Mile Makers. Um, I am selling at Born and Bread in their storefront right now. Um, soon to be a whole bunch of other places, um, but at the moment, that's it. Um, my Instagram is at moon.mojo or at serotonin Sarah. It's my personal account. Um, yeah, there's something else. I think that's that's about it. Great. All right. Well, thank you everyone for coming. Thank you, Sarah. Sarah, again. This is great. Um, and Sarah and I do a cold plunge at noon on Sundays most weeks. So yes. if you want to be yes. adventurous like us, you can meet us at Galley Beach <laughs> Sunday <Yes>. at noon. <laughs> All right. Well, everyone have a great night. Thanks so much All for right. coming and we'll see you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Good night.